Angron is a region located next to the Uruga River. Those who have only played the main Witcher games will most likely not be very familiar with it. But if you've read the books or played a Thronebreaker, you'll have an idea of what Angron is. To quickly describe Angron to those who have only played The Witcher 3, imagine Angron to be kind of like a Velen, but worse. Angron is very thinly populated and is generally considered to be nothing but wilderness. But where exactly is this land located? Well, if you look at the map, the world map from CDPR, and you look at where Angren is, you are led to believe that it lies south of the Uruga River. This, however, is a mistake that goes back more than two decades. In what was most likely the first map drawn of the Northern Realms by Stanislav Komarek, he marked Angren as lying on both sides of the Ruga. However, this map was, as far as I could find, made before Baptism of Fire was released and based solely on Andrei Sapkowski's notes. CDPR presumably looked at this map when making theirs, which resulted in Angren being located to the south of the Ruga on their map, while it is actually located north of the river. To later on, to try to work their way around this mistake, they created an Guardian province named Angren, which was located to the south of the Uruga. The land where Angren lies on the CDPR map is actually mostly just Dol Angra. So just to be clear, the region of Angren lies between Mahakam and the Uruga, whilst Angren on the map is an Guardian province with the same name but lacking the region of Angren itself. There are only a few notable places in Angren, mainly due to the lack of population. The capital of this land is Tusla Castle, a not very impressive castle, as it exists out of one stone tower and the rest of the structure is made out of wood. This was mainly due to the soil of Angren, as the soil itself wasn't really meant to build large stone structures on. A decent amount of time ago, Ragbard, who was then married to Bienvenue la Louvre, who was the Queen of Temeria at that time, ordered Tuzla Castle to be built. To do this, he drove the remaining elves from Angren out to the land. Driving the elves out wasn't much of a problem, as the elves themselves seemed very hesitant to stay in Angren, as they didn't like the land itself. Ragbard tasked the Grand Royal Huntsman, Trogovit, with overseeing the construction of the castle. However, due to a lack of stone, they had to mainly use wood from old oak trees to construct the castle. The lack of stone, however, wasn't for lack of trying. The castle at first was meant to have three large stone towers. However, when so many of the stone transports got stuck and were lost to the land, they just gave up. Another notable place in Angren that you can find a bit more to the east is where the druids live, at the circle in Cat Du. Cat Du meaning Black Grove. The druids have lived in Cat Du for a long time. However, due to certain events and an ever stronger growing power hidden in Angren, they decided at some point to leave and to head to Cat Mirkvit, located north of Toussaint. But from what I've told you now, Angren doesn't seem that bad. Well, from here it only gets worse and worse. Angren is hard to patrol for nearby kingdoms. This leads to several groups of bandits taking control of the land. And no one could do anything about it because sending an army into Angren to deal with them was just not worth it, as another group would just come out of the ground and take control of the army had left. Of the examples of bandits taking over Angren can be seen in Thronebreaker with Gimpy Gerwin. Gerwin and his men had constructed a small fort in one of the many forgotten parts of Angren. From this place he ruled over the nearby peasants and he wasn't a kind ruler. Gimpy Gerwin was kind of like the Bloody Baron, except the Bloody Baron has standards and seems to at least care about a few people other than himself. Gimpy Gerwin, not so much. The price to live under his rule was high, 
the slightest offense would be severely punished. For example, if someone stole something, even if it was just a few scraps of food, they would most likely or possibly be killed and their loved ones would be forced to wear the cut of hands around the neck. And no one could do anything about men like Gimpy Gerwin that ruled Angron, for they just didn't have the power there, and it was not worth the trouble to move an army in through Angron. But Gimpy was far from the only criminal that we know of from these lands. Two out of Renfri's gang members came from Angron, one of them being the bold guy. But we haven't gotten to the worst part of Angron yet. Iskith. Out of every swamp on the continent, none is worse than Iskith. This part of Angron is filled with monsters. So many in fact, that the people living there don't even bother hiring witches anymore. Because there are just so many that they have to learn to live with them as a part of the landscape. There are in fact so many different monsters in Iskith that not even the witchers know of the existence of every single one of them. Some of the notable monsters from Iskith include Clusty Warps, which could grow large enough to drag a cow into the murky waters with ease, Plumards, vampires that look like kind of a cross between a monkey and a bat that like to hunt the groups from the sky at night, and of course crab spiders, they would hide between the plants and wait for anyone to get close. Anyone or anything that would get too close to the flower, they would kill. But not just the monsters in Iskith are what kills you, there are other dangers. There are plenty of plants and trees that would like you to become their meal too. There are plenty of meat-eating plants in Iskith, as well as those that have branches that have the same effect as crab spider venom, making them very lethal. But the land itself also poses a threat. There is poisonous gas in the swamps that can kill you, and a single mishap can result in you sinking to the bottom of the marsh. But there is something else in Iskith. A creature worshipped by the local populace, named Gernikora, the Bloody Mistress. This is a unique monster that is able to control other monsters using her special leeches. If you want to know more about her, I'll link a video in the top right side of the screen. By now, you most likely understand why Angren is considered to be one of the worst parts of the continent to live in. It is even so bad that witchers try to avoid parts of it like Iskith because of all the dangers. But surely there must be something of value in these lands. Well, yes. There is one valuable resource that can be found in Angren. Wood. The only reason that some kingdoms even bother with Angren is the large amount of wood that can be cut down from these lands. During the Second Northern War, Nilfgaard was using the region to supply the shipbuilders near Sintra with wood by having the logs flow down the stream of the Ruga River. Wood and logs from Angren were in fact so sought after for things like shipbuilding that it became known as Angranian gold. Angren had been under the influence of Temeria for a long time as they were the largest kingdom nearby and could afford the men it took to keep an eye on the region, at least kind of, with all the bandits roaming around. However, after the Northern War, the land of Angren, which was used during the war by Meath to fight her guerrilla war, was eventually decided to be given officially to Voltest of Temeria to strengthen Temeria for protection against Nilfgaard. Now, while we have covered the region of Angren, Let's have a short look at the Nilfgaardian province of Angren. This province is far less interesting than the northern region of Angren. However, it has its own fair share of importance, for this region is one of the two main ways armies can reach from Nilfgaard into the northern realms, the other being the marginal steppes in Sintra. Almost all the population of the province of Angren lives in Riverdale. The rest of the land just like the other Angren, is sparsely populated, with just a few small villages here and there where they cut logs and produce paper from the residue. A lot of the places in The Witcher take inspiration from parts of the real world. When it comes to Angren, it seems like this could possibly have taken a bit of inspiration from the Black Forest in Germany. This largely, however, is due to the name of the Druid Circle, as Cat 2 
can be translated to the Welsh Coatstu, which means black forest or black wood. At least that's what Google Translate said, so uh, I suppose I can trust it. But for the swamp bit of Iskith, I couldn't find really anything to coincide with it. There were no other real connections I could find. But it seems like parts of Angwin were based around the Black Forest. I left out a few bits in this video about Geralt and his group going through Angwin, mainly because I decided to leave it kind of spoiler free in that area. As well as why I don't cover every single thing specifically that happened there in Thronebreaker. For some of the events that happened in Thronebreaker in Angren, you might consider looking at the video about Gary Cora if you haven't seen it already. And for other events surrounding Geralt's group, I would recommend possibly looking at Milva's video as Angren kind of plays an important part for her. But what do you think of Angren? Would you like to see a future game explore more of the many unknown monsters that hide in Iskith? Till the next video. Bye.